This is a North American Arms Mini Revolver. It is one of the smallest handguns you can buy and just about anybody should be able to find a way to comfortably carry one all day. It's also one of the last guns I would ever consider carrying for self-defense and today I want to talk about why. NAA makes several versions of their single action only five shot mini revolvers chambered in either 22 Magnum, 22 Long Rifle, or 22 Short. This model is a 22 Magnum with a 1 and 1 8 inch barrel, a standard integral front sight and no rear sight, and a set of rubber NAA Mini Master grips. It also came with a second cylinder chambered for 22 long rifle. Loaded with five rounds of 22 Magnum, it weighs just eight ounces. The original low profile wood grips that most of these revolvers come with will shrink the dimensions a little more. And the 22 long rifle and 22 short versions have shorter cylinders, so they're even smaller. The appeal here is fairly obvious. A lot of people want to be armed, but they don't want the inconvenience of rearranging their entire wardrobe to be able to conceal a larger firearm. It's also popular with people who live or work in what we call non-permissive environments where there might be serious consequences like being fired or socially ostracized if anyone were to discover that they carry a gun. The NAA Mini Revolver gives people like these a highly discreet option that they can carry all the time without making any changes to the way they dress. The Mini Revolvers also seem to be fairly well constructed. It's a simple design with very few parts. There are a surprising number of factory options available like different barrel lengths and sights, as well as plenty of aftermarket accessories like grips and holsters. And whether you like it or not, you can't deny that there are several documented cases of people successfully defending themselves with NAA mini revolvers. So I don't want to give the impression that if you carry one of these things and you ever have to actually use it, you are definitely going to die because that is demonstrably false. But I do think there are much better options out there that are also very easy to carry and allow you to be prepared for a much wider spectrum of potential deadly threats. The problems with these guns are numerous enough that I'm not going to go into detail on all of them. There are some safety issues I'm not crazy about, like the fact that you have to fiddle with this rod right here by the muzzle in order to load and unload the gun, or that you have to press the trigger on a loaded gun in order to get the hammer into one of the safety slots on the cylinder before you can safely carry it. Of course, the usual objections to relying on a gun like this are the low ammo capacity, the underpowered and sometimes unreliable rimfire ammo, and the further reduction in power you get from firing 22s out of a one inch barrel. Now, I think those are all legitimate concerns, but they are not the main reasons why I would discourage someone from carrying one of these. Above all else, in a life-threatening emergency situation, what I need to be able to do with a carry gun is draw it quickly and get two or three accurate hits on a target that's inside of 20 feet. Historically, that level of performance has been good enough for about 80 to 90% of legitimate defensive gun uses by non-uniform citizens. When armed citizens do lose gunfights, it seldom has anything to do with ammo capacity or caliber. It's usually because they simply fail to get the gun out quickly enough and get rounds on target. Now that's a very low bar of performance, but meeting that level, even on a one-way shooting range with paper targets, is far more difficult with an NAA mini revolver than most other handguns, including other pocket pistols. The fact that they are so small means they can be tricky to dig out of the bottom of a pocket, which seems to be the preferred carry method for mini revolvers. The oversized rubber grip that I have on this one does seem to help a lot with that aspect of drawing it. A pocket holster is also beneficial because it keeps the gun correctly oriented in your pocket. NAA does make some mini revolvers with what appear to be decent sights, but most of them only have a front sight, including this one. And then of course, there is the fact that all NAA mini revolvers are single action only. You have to manually cock the hammer in order to fire them. Now that doesn't take a lot of extra time, but it does add complexity to the draw stroke and a potential failure point. For instance, when I really try to shoot this gun as quickly as possible, occasionally my thumb slips off the top of the hammer when I'm cocking it. I think people's first impression of these things is that they seem really solid or that they're cute or fun to play with, but if you actually try to draw and shoot them using any kind of standard with time pressure, you find out pretty quickly that they are not really designed with normal size human hands in mind. I I want to suggest five alternative pocket pistols using five 
different carry methods, and then we're gonna see how each of them compare to the NAA mini revolver at the range. Now, none of these guns are as small as the mini revolvers, but they all are still really easy to carry with minimal effort. I will be talking about each of these guns and carry methods in more detail in future installments of our pocket pistol series. I'm not saying any of these are necessarily the best carry options out there, but I think any of them would be preferable to a mini revolver. First is the ubiquitous Ruger LCP. It weighs 12.2 ounces loaded with seven rounds of 380 ACP. This one is a factory variant they call the LCP Custom with improved sights and a red aluminum trigger. I'm drawing it from a Blue Force Gear pocket holster in my right front pants pocket. Next is the kel P32. After the NAA revolver, this one is the lightest of the bunch at 10.1 ounces fully loaded with eight rounds of 32 ACP. I'm not much of a fan of kel in general, but the P32 is known to be generally far more reliable than their other products. I'm using the kel belt clip to attach the gun directly to my belt so I can draw it from inside my waistband. I am reluctant to recommend this as a carry method because it does leave the trigger guard uncovered, but I think the risk is fairly low with a double action only pistol like the P32. Number three is a Glock 42. It's 16.6 .6 ounces loaded with seven rounds of 380 ACP. This is on the larger side for what you might consider to be a pocket pistol. I'm including it because I want to demonstrate the utility of a holster that is designed so you can tuck your shirt in around it. In this case, I'm using a Raven Concealment Vanguard II minimalist holster with a tucked in button down shirt. Number four is the Smith & Wesson Model 43C. This is the eight shot J-frame 22 long rifle that I've used previously in our pocket pistol series. It's not especially small next to the mini revolver, but it is very light at 12.3 ounces loaded. I'm drawing it from a Can-Can Concealment Micro Sport Belt. This is essentially an elastic belt with several sleeves sewn into it for carrying small handguns in whatever position you'd like along the waistline. And finally, I've got a Ruger LCR in 327 mag Magnum. This time I'm loading it with 32 HNR Magnum ammo. It is the heaviest option here at 19.4 ounces loaded, and I'm drawing it from a Filster City Special, which also happens to be a tuckable inside the waistband holster. I'm including this one mostly as a control to see how these other options measure up to the type of carry method that you're more likely to see recommended. To compare all these options at the range, I set up a couple of very simple drills. For the first one, I placed an IDPA target at six feet. All I had to do was draw and fire two shots at an eight inch circle in the center. I timed that and added a second for any hits outside the eight inch circle. Now this is not a difficult exercise. It's not the kind of drill I would suggest anyone actually use at the range to practice, but I set it up that way because what I am repeatedly hearing from the mini revolver apologists is that these are not target pistols, they are close range, get off me guns. The idea seems to be that marksmanship does not matter in a defensive encounter, so it's not a problem that the mini revolvers are difficult to shoot accurately. I think there are some serious problems with that presupposition, but for right now, we are gonna give the mini revolver fans the benefit of the doubt. Six feet is just outside of contact distance and hitting the target might not be a problem, but speed is very important. I shot that drill six times with each of the five alternate pocket guns I mentioned, and then with the NAA mini revolver drawn from my front pants pocket. Averaging those six times together, including any penalties for missed shots, my fastest was the LCR and the Filster belt holster at 1.49 seconds for both shots with a 1.24 draw. The kel P32 was quite a bit slower at 2.35 with a 188 draw. The LCP, Glock 42, and Smith & Wesson 43C were all in between somewhere. The average time for the NAA mini revolver was 3.38 seconds with an average draw time of 2.65. The main problem was consistency. I made a lot of mistakes with the mini revolver, like fumbling with the hammer or getting the grip caught up inside my pocket, and a few bad runs ran up the overall average. I made plenty of mistakes with the other guns too, especially with the LCP and the kel but they were easier to recover from. Now, before anyone accuses me of sandbagging to intentionally make the mini revolver look bad, I ran the drill six more times with that gun, and if you take my best six times, that basically eliminates any of the messier attempts. The average of the six best runs was 2.57 total with a 2.04 draw, so much better than the first six runs, but still the slowest time. 
For the second drill, I increased the distance to 15 feet. That's still well within the typical range for self-defense shootings, but now, marksmanship becomes more of an issue. It's not a difficult shot, but you also can't just stick the gun out there and fire. You need to at least have some gross alignment of the sights or some other aiming reference in order to reliably hit the target. Again, the LCR with the Filster belt holster was the fastest with an average time of 1.89 seconds and a 1.51 draw. Drawing the LCP from a pocket was almost a full second slower with a 2.81 average time. The kel pocket clip was even slower than that, but the mini revolver Average time of 4.3 seconds. Again, the poor ergonomics led to a lot of mistakes in the draw stroke, but at this range, accuracy also suffered. With such a short barrel, even the tiniest misalignment will send the rounds way off target. Averaging my best six out of 12 runs, I still ended up with a very slow time of 3.68 seconds. I do not consider myself to be a great shooter, but I can shoot pretty much any handgun okay. I do not shoot the NAA mini revolver well. I could get a little better with more practice, or maybe if I had one of the variants with the bigger sights, or maybe if I carried in a different pair of pants with different pockets. I don't think any of those things are gonna turn this gun into something that I would be comfortable relying on for a life-saving tool. I am sure plenty of people can run one of these much better than I can, and for them, a mini revolver might be a viable option. But the average shooter is gonna be, at best, very inconsistent with a mini revolver, especially as soon as you add any kind of time pressure. The typical gunfight only lasts about three seconds. If it takes you three seconds just to get the gun out and fire the first shot, you're already way behind the curve. Carrying a gun requires a little effort. Your life doesn't have to revolve around it, but it takes some work to figure out what kind of gun and carry method you can reasonably incorporate into your lifestyle. And then you're gonna have to put at least some effort into becoming proficient with that setup. Just because you toss a mini revolver in your pocket so you can put a check mark in the I'm armed box doesn't make you automatically safer.